Let's talk about secondary structure. There are actually two or even three components of secondary structure. We'll talk about the alpha helix first. So here on the left we have a ball and stick model of a polypeptide which has formed an alpha helical structure because of the ability of oxygens on carboxyl groups to form hydrogen bonds with nitrogens on amino acids nearby. The H bonds actually form between every other amino acid in a polypeptide. And this is a natural consequence of the primary structure, the natural consequence of the actual amino acid sequence. So here is that alpha helix uh, illustrated with a ribbon structure to show you the backbone of the polypeptide and to track the actual helix. Another major component of secondary structure are the so-called beta sheets or beta pleated sheets. Shown on the left is a pleated polypeptide. Here are the peptide linkages, or at least the region where they are. They're not the linkages in their entirety, because this is only showing the backbone. It's actually not showing the double bonded oxygen to the carbon on each amino acid. So you don't see the whole linkage here. But that's where they would be. This is one amino acid to orient you. So when you look at this on your own, you can follow the individual amino acids in this portion of a polypeptide. The peptide linkages are planar. I wish this illustration would have actually shown that. But the peptide linkages are planar. That is, because they don't involve a single bond around which every atom can rotate, but rather three bonds, a double bonded oxygen and a bond between carbon and nitrogen, that linkage it forms a plane. And so the entire structure of the polypeptide takes on a planar shape. And that's what that ribbon is supposed to show you. And the result is that the side chains of the amino acids alternate from one side of the pleat, or plane, to the other. Well, when pleated strands like these, two or more of them, line up, hydrogen bonds can again form between the N's and the O's in two or more pleated chains to form this pleated sheet. And so I've shown you the H bonds with little red dots, showing you where they would form. So now you see the relative position of the oxygens on the carbons as well.